You've got questions? O'Reilly Auto Parts has answers. Need a pro you can trust? We've got that too. No matter what you need, our professional parts people have the training and expertise to help you do things right. Deep automotive knowledge. Just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. Hashtag no music, no intro. By week. It is the bye week for the New Orleans Saints. The Saints Block Party Podcast brought to you by BetterHelp. Still here. Still wanted to put something out this week. And honestly, like, this episode is going to be a lot fucking longer than I. What is it, Ryan? Wait, what? What? What is it about? What is it about us, bro? Like, I, 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 I want to know. I, we stay in our little area of the of, of Saints fan. Then we have our podcast. We have our community. Of course, as any business owners would want and a podcast co-host would want, you want to build on that community. You want this to grow. You want more people to become involved, to join, which means more Patreons, more listeners, more subscribers. If you're watching this on YouTube, like and subscribe, all of that, right? Because that helps the business grow. And then whatever, however more goes into the business, as people who have been to our meetups and know what we do, that goes back to the group and goes back to the community. We don't come on here, rarely do we come on here and talk about a, a, another podcast or, or whatever, or another individual, maybe on, on Saints Twitter, um, usually not without provocation, right? And there's just like, Go, you go back to there was a thing of the, no logistics, and then there was the uh, after the London game last year. So I don't even I don't even know the name of the fucking the that UK fucking podcast. They well, had a little little joke or whatever. What what is it about us? I want I want to know, bro. Like, I want to know, bro. Cool, we're just some cool ass dudes that cut up and talk about the Saints, bro. Like that's what we that's all we do, but. If we if we say something, it, it is immediately immediately just disregarded. Uh, asking for sources, bro. I watched. I was watching the Broncos game. Broncos game Monday Night Football, and I wanted to tweet it even before that game happened. I had a feeling all week. I'm like, man, Sean gonna beat those Broncos. Sean gonna beat I those Bills. Feeling too, bro. Because <laughs> we, we know so. We know so. Games like that, he go Pro- get the team up, bro. Pro- <laughs> Yeah. That team up, man. And ain't like Sean hasn't had success against a Sean, Mc, a Sean McDermott defense when he Sean McDermott was the defensive coordinator for the Panthers for the longest time. Right. Sean, no. Anyway, I didn't put the tweet out. The game happened, and there's just little things that would happen in that game, bro. I'm just like, oh, this nigga coaching, coaching. Like, this nigga coaching, coaching, bro. Like, I don't know if you saw it, but the, the way they executed the – First half field goal of the, the, the run the drill. Getting everybody out there and everything. Bruh, nigga, I almost fainted. Like, oh, God. Oh, can, you imagine nigga, this, miss- can you imagine the Saints team doing that, bruh? <laughs> you know, we get the flag. We get that flag immediately. Nigga, we had players on the wrong side of the end zone, bruh. Like, shut the fuck Wait, we're supposed to be down over here? So it, just, it was just that that fun, like, oh, man, like, we had a, we had a good coach and shit didn't work out. The funny thing is, I, so much shit has happened in our lives and in Saints' timeline. I legitimately forgot that Sean Payton wanted to come back to New Orleans and, and, play, and coach for the Saints again this offseason. Forgot about it. Just because so much yeah. shit has happened. Like, the, had to go back. I, I put a tweet out. And and shout out to our dude, Tim, who's a big supporter of ours. I believe he's in New York. He hit, hit, hit me up on Instagram. And he was like, did, did Sean really want to come back? And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, like, I forgot, I completely forgot that he did. And then I put a tweet out on it on Tuesday or whatever fucking day it was. I don't even know what fucking day it was. And all of a fucking sudden, it's just like the whole, it's the whole Taysom thing all over again. Yep. We said it on here January 31st, right? We don't, mm. make big de- we don't make big deals about it. We don't make proclamations we don't put out breaking news if you listen to us we don't do it it's not it's not what we do it is not what we do 
put out a tweet said that Mickey was a, a fool for not bringing Sean back, which he fucking was. I understand to a degree, like psychologically, probably why he didn't. It was still a dumb fucking decision. And and no. if you're gonna uh, strap your horse to fucking Dennis Allen, then you deserve everything that you fucking get. Absolutely, true. But we got bombarded to the fact where shout out to whoever runs the ESPN AM account for New Orleans. They're like, no, like he actually he, he actually said it and posted the video and. Ten days after we had said it on the podcast, Sean is being interviewed by Adam Adam Sean. Fuck Adam Sean still, by the way. Yeah. Um, and literally confirms that he did want to come back and said that it would have been tricky because guess what? DA was the head coach. So And I forgot all about I forgot about it because I remember that interview and I remember tweeting it. And I just I just forgot about it. I was like, oh yeah, he he did confirm it himself. Like I just <laughs> it was thing, a small Ryan. news item. It was like a it wasn't like a big news item. It was like, yeah, you know. <laughs> we have given hints or broken so much shit on this podcast. I've, I've, I've literally forgot all the shit we've, we've, we've given hints or broken from. Bro. Like, it's because we don't, it's not even about winning the credit, honestly. Right. It's just like, so it was the same, same fucking thing. Oh, sources, you didn't say that. Had to, had to make a video last night, bro. Had to, had to, been in the you lab. Lied. You remember, you remember, uh, it was that State of the Union years ago. Obama was up there talking, and he said, so "I don't even know what he was talking about." And that Republican just screamed, "You lie!" <laughs> like during the middle of the State of the Union, you know, millions of people watching. And Obama was like, "What?" You know what I'm saying? It was this whole thing. That's what just it reminded me of because you just threw the little tweet out, just threw the tweet out, and people was like, "This is a lie. This isn't true. This never happened." <laughs> Calm down. Let's calm down. <laughs> Confirmed it. Ten days after I said the podcast. That's me. It's funny. Um. So, it, it's 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 more humorous. It's a it, first. It annoyed me. Then it's just humorous because I can make fun of it and make funny videos out of it to make people look like idiots. Because I'm getting better at video editing. But something That's that good video, bro. That shit was good. Thanks, bro. I'm getting, nice. get, getting in the lab, bro. I'm getting in the, getting the lab a little bit. That 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 uh, Microsoft ch- uh, ch- clip chip, whatever, bro. Clip chip, dope. Man. Got, got everything you need in there. Make that shit real easy to video edit. I, I want to say this though: when this whole thing happened again this week, here's wh- I don't know why the the Andrew thing continues to come. up. Well, I I did purposely take a shot at Andrew. Um, when that was all going on. But the funny thing is the whole Andrew judge, judge, whatever thing is I had blocked Andrew two, three years ago. I, I, I saw his tweets, used to follow him very quickly, kind of identified the type of person that he was. And I said, no, I don't, don't need that block moved on. Did not ever, ever, on any social media, anything like that, put him on blast, disparage him, blah, blah, blah. What's my thing? So I think what people have to understand is that I I did not personally come after Andrew. Something that was taught to me a very long time ago by, by my elders were, you don't start fights, but you finish them, right? So when we put out the whole Taysom stuff, which still true, by the way, and Derek Carr is still told the team that about Taysom when he, before he signed or after he signed. The fact of how he came about what we said and literally made a shot of like us spreading misinformation, like right. that's coming, that's coming after our credibility. Right. Like what we do, what we do. I've never had said anything outwardly about Andrew until then so once you start coming after what ryan and i have built personally oh you best believe i can finish that shit right and it's oh why are you saying andrew's like he's not a racist or man everyone in my in my mentions that get almost everyone in my mentions who be getting uh defending andrew looks like a proud like a a proud boy member bro like every (laughs) single one of go go look at the bios the the bios ryan oh okay he okay okay y'all just y'all just seem to just like the like just congregate together right <laughs> and then when all that shit happened and blah blah it's like oh well let me make amends and blah blah and oh hit you guys hit you guys up on the side no you, you did that you did that shit 
in DMs, bruh. And not mine, you block. But you did that shit in DMs. So you're going to say something about our podcast, about, uh, pretty much saying that our credibility is shit and we're spreading misinformation. And then you realize that that wasn't the case, but you can't be man enough to go on the same social media app where you were disparaging us saying, hey guys, my fault. I had it wrong or blah, blah, blah. Maybe those guys know what they're talking about, blah, blah. But you're doing that in DMs because you want to save face. I'm hip to the game. My my Twitter, my Twitter's still up. It's not private. I'm out here. Ryan out here. So all these people who were coming at after us, we, we didn't start this shit. We, we, we didn't start this shit. It reminds me very similar of the whole Saints Twitter bracket March Madness, bruh. Oh Lord. That, those those finals, bro. Ryan versus Nader. Bro, you no, know, it started off very jubilant and very and this shit started getting left real quick. I'm like, what the hell was this doing? Like, going after my dog? <laughs> my dog, oh, bro. Like, coming at coming at Okay, it was coming coming at you, and I say, you know what? I don't start fights, but we can fucking finish them, right? So anyone who's listening, watches this, whatever. If you're going to come at us, please, please be prepared because we got smoke. We we can handle the smoke when we got smoke. We don't we don't go poking at bears. That's not what we do. We like having a good time, laughing, joking, talking about the Saints, expanding our expansive family that we're building. But if you come at us, we got shit back for you. That's all. That's all I wanted to say, bro. Like everyone be like, oh, I've said it. The bows on it. Uh, period period so i just wanted to get get that off my chest and also sean payne 100 percent wanted to come back and he and it was it just it didn't happen it was never gonna happen so just here's wanted, what it just is wanted, just want to put it out there here's what um, it is man people just gotta lighten up too bro like, please look man we're gonna get jokes off on twitter bro like look ab you it's did, in your you, it's in you your tweet, it's in your bayou ryan you tweeted 99 dark hair 99 jokes bro you tweeted the uh the 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 Charlottesville dudes tiki torches or whatever you know that, that it burnt them up a little bit you know but shit was funny bro I laughed he coming at me like and you just supporting this I'm like shit was funny I'm like what the fuck <laughs> I'm gonna laugh at some shit dog he was fuck bro like this shit was funny bro people come at me all the time dude uh when I said uh, I'm losing weight bitch I forgot what he oh. said but he was talking about <laughs> talking about. Wolf has never passed up a meal or whatever. That shit was funny. Nigga, <laughs> like, I live, so funny. I'm born and raised in New Orleans and I live in the deep south and I'm black. Like, yes, what is your right. point? It was a good one. It was a good one. I still laugh at no logistics. The no logistics, that was, that's a classic. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> uh, so, man, it's all jokes to me, bro. People just got to lighten up. Lighten up. We're, talking about a, we're talking about a sports team here, man. Sports team, sports team that's the last two seasons have been very a very underwhelming sports team. At, right. at that. Um, so I wanted to do this episode. It's the bye. It's the bye week. I wanted to pull up the the tweet that that I think it was Captain Terrell said from the presser. The, we should just oh, have like a, 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 we just should have like just a da oh. quote presser in every podcast, bro. Cause this man is lost in this bro. bit. Just, I just before you even say that, bro. I go, just go ahead. You know, like I, I, I feel for the Saints media sometimes because I know they be wanting to say some shit, bro. When Da be giving them them answers, I know they be wanting to say some shit, dog. And you know, it's just the way the whole media game is set up with the NFL, right? You know, especially with the Saints, the way it's set up. But man, like. Some of the man's is DA be coming with, bro. I'm just like, what? Like, what? <laughs> like, I, I wish I, I just be wanting to be there just one time to hit a follow up. Just to hit a follow up, bro. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, my God. Captain Terrell, yesterday, oh, sorry, two days ago, uh, said or tweeted, Dennis Allen said personnel changes on the field have been a little, a little bit of a topic of discussion. He said he had meetings with the staff asking where, asking were they coaching the right way and were the players doing what they were being coached to do? If not, they would consider changes. 
What week is it? <laughs> what week, is it? Ten, week eleven? Well, I don't even... week, week eleven, bro. Week eleven upcoming, bro. There's only seven more weeks left in the season. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> This is where we are, man. This is your head coach. <laughs> it's, it's funny, bro. Like it's it's funny. It is it's funny, very. Bro. It's irritating as shit. Because that's the thing. I don't like we you we talked you, you and I don't like l- wins and losses largely don't bother us whatsoever. But but like inept inept shit. Drives Bro. us up a fucking wall. I see. I, I mean, if I see it with another team, I'm gonna call it out. Like, right. Look, the Panthers. Uh, Frank Wright. He he calling plays most of the season. He gave up play calling like two weeks ago to fix the offense. Offense still trash. Now you're taking black cape. <laughs> He's got it back. Like, I was like, it's just gross. Like that's like you just see like that's just ineptitude. You know what I'm saying? You can see it. And, you know, the Saints are the flip side of that. Saints are like, we're not making any changes. Any changes, <laughs> bro. Not a fucking one. Not a change. Um, They said at 5-5, five and five, they're number one in the NFC South. I, it's just... <sighs> that this up, Not this upcoming weekend, obviously, but next weekend after the bye week, that Falcons game looms huge and, oh, I, and, I, and i think and here's the thing i say it looms huge but i think the thing that really annoys me is that that falcons game should not have any bearing whatsoever because the proof has been in the put like right. it should have no bearing on whatever on whatever a decision that needs to be made on dennis allen as head coach it shouldn't no be. i know it no. will because that but there should be so i wanted I, we went you, it's easy to say hashtag fire dennis allen it's, it's easy to say that but maybe we should have got Corey on this episode, bro. He, you know, he's a lawyer, bro. I wanna, I wanna take it to court. I want, I wanna, I wanna present the Saints Block Party podcast, sponsored by BetterHelp. Case that the judge and jury, Gail Benson, fuck Mickey, because you're on trial too. I want to provide them with evidence beyond a reasonable doubt. Beyond a reasonable doubt. That's that's the burden of proof. Of why DA should be fired. I'm not talking about what what children's court is, prima facie on its face is that something happened. No, no, no. I want that criminal court standard. I want that beyond a reasonable doubt. I listen mm. I listened some while waiting for you to get on, and I know that these aren't even all of them, bro. I, I know there's as of right now, I got 17 from, from when he was hired as head coach till now. And I feel like I'm still missing a shit ton. But I got 17. Um, I, I'm not going to go through them quickly because I want us to at least take a little break, talk about them, and then anything that I think of as we're talking, I'll add to it. Anything that you think of, I want you to talk about it as well. Start, start right here. This was the first warning sign to Ryan and I. First offseason last year. Very lax with the players. Players' attendance. Players' pre- I don't know what other podcasts brought it up and said, man, this don't feel good. Like, this don't seem right. Remember when we brought it up, it was like, oh, you, what are you guys talking about? It's no big, it's a big deal. It was just, 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 just talking about it, that's it. <laughs> All right, well, just, just the first little warning thing I saw. Um, before the season started last year, what happened? CDU's got traded. Trade out of spite. This this that trade was on Dennis Allen, and that trade was also on Mickey Loomis, because a big part of this whole evidence is that Dennis Allen cannot be in a situation where he did where he feels like he is challenged, and that when you have that as a leader, head coach, manager, CEO of a CEO five hundred, manager of Walmart. If you have a boss that feels like he or she cannot have people around them to challenge them, not be disrespectful, not, but like, just, just challenge. That's why CDD's got traded out. 
got shipped out. So you do say a couple of words to Dennis Allen after a practice, blah, blah. Oh, okay, I can't have that. Got to make an example out of him. Got to, got to show him. Got to show him who's boss. Shimmy. Got to show him who's boss. Worst shimmy ever. <laughs> Traded a top five slot corner at his position at the time. Out of spite. Also, the the blood is also on Mickey. Blood being hyperbole. The blood is on Mickey because... You got a fifth round pick for him to the Eagles. We know I'm not. I didn't even put in the fact that you traded him to a perennial Super Bowl team in your own conference, and he got traded to the Eagles for a fifth round pick before the Saints did not even survey the league to see if another team wanted to trade for him for a higher pick. That is malpractice of just simple team building. Malpractice. What do I know? Play Jameis with a broken back, spinal. <laughs> Had that man out there after that after that Falcons game, he played, what was it? It was the Panthers game Panthers, yeah. and the Bucks game, if I'm remembering correct. Yeah. Did they really start last season with three fucking division games? Jesus yep. Christ. Um, played him with a broken back. Literally fractures in his back. I was hearing leading up to those games, there is no fucking way that Jameis should be playing. Point my period. No way he should be playing. He played. So that's not that's not looking out for your players and their health. Keeping up with that same oh theme. Pause of, one second. Go ahead. You you put that out there. A couple of weeks later, Jameis did an interview with Mike Triplett Mm-mm. on the New Orleans football. Basically saying the same thing. Oh, <laughs> it shouldn't have been playing. Oh, basically saying okay. the same thing. All right, but we don't we don't know what we talk about sometimes. Played Jarvis, flew Jarvis Landry to London. You, uh, people might even forgot that Jarvis Landry was even on the team last season. Uh, flew Jarvis Landry to London with an injury that he had sustained against the Panthers. Um, hit the flight to London. Um, not not our. Amazing London in our community, but London in the UK made the injury worse for George Landry. It also made the injury that Alvin AK had last season, which I believe was bruised ribs or something or bruising his yeah. ribs after the Panthers game. Flew him to London as well on an eight hour flight. You're not moving. You're 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 sitting down, even though they're they're flying luxury. Injuries were made worse on that flight, flying them to London. Jarvis Landry played against the Vikings in that game played like one snap on uh, a two point conversion. If I remember correctly, he caught a two point conversion and then he was not seen again. AK didn't even play in that game because his injuries got re aggravated on that flight. Cause he was sitting so long again, not looking out for your players. Paulson Adebo, Pete Warner. I want to start with Paulson Adebo. Paulson Adebo has looked at times this season. Like he is a, at the very worst, a, Second team All Pro, just like I, I sincerely mean that. That is not hyperbole. Oh, yeah. He is hyperbole. stellar this season. You and I were hard on him last season. In fans in general were hard on, were hard on Paulson Adibo last season. He essentially, if you remember correctly, like right before the season started, like he got that injury and then like yep. it was like uh, then it like lingered and blah blah. And then he came back and then he just didn't look good. He shouldn't have been playing. That injury was still there. It was lingering. It could have been a situation where maybe Paulson Debo is trying to play through it and trying to push it as most athletes do. Coaches have to be able to be like, you know what? Sit, sit it down. Sit it down. Yep. Wait till you get healthy. Didn't happen, Paulson Debo. That's why his play looked so – a big reason of why he looked so bad last year in, in his second season. Pete Warner played last season in games that he shouldn't have played also because of an injury. Um, and I forgot all about this until I started typing it up. Do you remember what we kept asking, like, does DA not know how to how to use the IR system, bro? Does this easy just yeah. not know how to use it? Just Marshawn was just not on put on IR. Jameis was not put on IR. Like those are roster spots, bro. Just Marshawn is like what eight nine weeks. What? What are you doing? Oh, so uh, stupid man. 
even before the OTA started last season, let's start with this one. And this was also this is for sure a, a, both a Mickey and a DA thing. Marcus May instead of Marcus Williams. The Saints let Mark Marcus Williams leave over one million dollars. That's a, that's a Mickey thing. That is a fundamentally a Mickey thing. And when I say that out loud, I can't help but think of trading places, bro. Like huh. the, the, the the making the one dollar bet, just yep. like you, you Mickey Loomis, you telling me that this player that you drafted and has an elite an elite trait that you cannot find in college safeties anymore, and you let him walk for a million fucking dollars, a million Ryan, one million dollars. You can't you can't you can't tell me that Kai can't find some some funny money somewhere and pay Marcus Williams a million dollars, bro, to keep him. So. I put that mostly on Mickey, but that's also on DA for feeling like, oh, well, we don't need Marcus Williams. I can go get Marcus May. We can do the same thing, blah, blah. Yeah. That Marcus May signing has been absolutely fucking atrocious. Awful. Just, uh, just, and that's what made it worse. If you if you had a younger player, you know, like did Von Bell to – did Kenneth Vicar to Von Bell, Von Bell to – uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got a younger player in the stable, you let the high price player go, you bring the younger player up. We didn't have that. So, you let Marcus Williams go and you go overpay, uh, uh, injured, injured, suspended, <laughs> injured, suspended free agent safety who was, you know, <laughs> solid at best. You know what I'm saying? Bro, bro that's like going to a, a- a car dealership turning in your car that was just good to you, bruh, and you just get like the, the hoopty, bruh, just, just a lemon. Like, let me just, what's the worst car you got on the lot? This one? Hey. Sure. Rank it up. Or even if they just went and signed like a guy, you know, for, you know, three, four million dollars, you know, to put back there. I even understood that. I'm like, okay, you just saving some money. You take a hit here and there. But y'all paid, what? Marcus made what, nine million, ten million? It's like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Quiet as cap. Daniel Sorensen in some games last season looked better than Marcus May ever. <laughs> don't start. Don't start that shit at him. Please don't start. <laughs> just say it. The White Knight was out there getting interceptions <laughs> against 2-2, two, two, bro. I just, I, anyway. Honey Badger. There was a lot of fanfare. It was, it, and, 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 and I want to be I want to be clear when, I, when I'm going through this list. There are some of the things that happened on this list that Ryan and I was like, all right, cool. Like, yeah. we, 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 we understood it. We saw the vision. There yeah. are some things that even though we saw the vision, we were like, eh. But I don't want to go through this list and act like we were were not a fan of any of these moves. Some right. of them we were absolutely fans of. But getting back to the list, Honey Badger. Yes, he's he's got he has some moments. He's had some inter- he's had some interceptions. He had an interception return for a touchdown this season. He had some interceptions last season. That's about it, bro. Like it just. I I don't know, I I don't Over, know. overpaid overpaid him. Uh, and that's a, a, force, and that's a, and a, that's a bad contract, bad, bad contract too. Man. Oh, that's yeah. the heart. Most Saints contracts they kind of can get out of them or get some wiggle room, but that Honey Badger contract, boy, that's a hard contract. Yeah. Um, sticking with Marcus May, and I just one one I just remembered. Why is Jordan Howden not starting over Marcus May right now? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Uh, they, he he was in the dime packages. He's not even in the dime package. They got uh, um what's Lonnie? His name? Lonnie in there. Yeah, for the dime. Cool, 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 cool. Cool. Okay. <laughs> to be fair, Lonnie Lonnie has had some. I oh, like he Lonnie. did. Like, no the, question. The Lonnie sign has been been good. To be fair, no question. No um, question. Where where am I? Oh, here we go. Uh, this was this season. Jags game lied about Kendra Miller being hurt against the Jags uh, and just said as being honest that saying that they just benched him for Jamal Williams, which like that, that, like this, this is the little shit, bro. It's like, if you don't, this is not, and I get it. NFL coaches lie all the fucking time. But when you're lying to get out of having to tell like the actual reason of why, like, just be honest with the media and say, you know what? You know, Kendra's still a young player. 
Uh, yeah. we, we trust in Jamal. Like, just come out and just be real about it, bro. But just to lie just to not do that? <laughs> it's insane. Oh, he had a bit of a shoulder. No, he didn't, bro. Like, right before the game started, didn't, didn't, didn't I say, didn't I tell us in the Discord? I was like, Kendra ain't playing. And then had him, had him as a full, as a, on the injury report that next Wednesday <laughs> with a, with a full practice. You know how that go, bro. That was just straight up late. We ain't trying to get that league notice. <laughs> Check that league notice. <laughs> get out of my face. Um, we've talked at nothing about the whole Trevor Penning thing. Uh, yeah. Benched by a, an article. He didn't tell Trevor Penning who was benched. I mean, I, I, need, I should probably add that Trevor, like, he's not even the, the sixth offensive lineman. Nope. Um... So I want to be careful how I say this because this is this is a, a, a newer one, not a newer one because I knew it, but I want to be make sure I protect everyone involved of making sure I don't blow up any sources. But I'll just say that um, last season when Jameis was coming back, um, Da may have asked certain players on the Saints who he should go with as the starter. Like, should he go, go back to Jameis? Should they go at Dalton? Because he really didn't know what he should do. Nigga, mm. what? <laughs> what? 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 Hit this guy out of my face, bro. You an NFL head coach. An NFL head coach. A CEO. You a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Pretty much. You know what I'm saying? This man out here po- po- polling the team, bro. Like, oh, well, well, yeah, yeah, should I should go with you. Like, it's such a bro. Bro, this, this, this list is pissing me off, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, just get started, this bitch. Pissing me off, man. Uh, we already talked about it. Um, a little bit when you talked about the whole Frank Frank Wright thing, but it tickled the shit out of me when the Bills fired Ken Dorsey. Not that, you know. Also, Ken Dorsey also is completely not the problem. Like, Josh Allen is oh, just bro. Josh Allen it to the highest degree right now. They <laughs> go to like a motherfucker, bro. Can, can we get Ken? Like, you know, Ken Dorsey probably like, no, I don't want to fucking work with you. Anyway. Oh. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Oh. This man just got fired and just like, DA though? Like, nah, I'm good. I'll, t- I'll take a little, little guaranteed money. Um, so that was just humorous to me because both these teams, Bills and Saints, sit five and five. Obviously, different aspirations. I could, I could say, although the Saints oh, deem yeah. themselves as as competitors, right? And you have a team who, in the Bills, who are making are making changes because, and to me, that it seems like it's more about making change for like making change sake potentially. Yeah, but with the Saints, the offense has been an issue for about two and a half seasons. Not about for two and a half seasons. Yeah, not one fucking thing has been done to potentially remedy that at all. And according to Da, ain't, ain't nothing gonna change. No, ain't nothing gonna change during this off or this during this bye week either, bro. Just out here, just just vibing, just hope, just hoping just magically. Just got to coach better, Adam. We got to coach it. Gail, 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 Mama Gail, Mama Gail, Mama Gail. If you have your head coach telling you that the solution to get to get the team better is to have better coaching. Now, Mama Gail, now, now shouldn't that tell you that maybe that's not the right coach in the position? <laughs> Hello? You, if you're telling me you got a coach better, then that means that you're the problem. And the fact that he's been saying this for a year and a half. Like, I've heard Sean Payton say that before. And that and that problem gets rectified. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With a defense allow, defense allowing naked boots, that shit get fixed. Fixed. You know? Imagine you when, go when, to your when job. When Drew Brees getting sacked. Sack to shits, that shit getting fixed. You know what I'm saying? Like, period. imagine you you go into your job, bro, and you just every day you go in, you just fucking shit up, bro. And you just go have 
just go to your, with your supervisor. Your supervisor's like, Ryan, what the fuck's going on, bro? Like, what's, what's the issue? Oh, uh, boss, I just, man, I just, I just got to do, do better. I got to work better. Gotta I got to work better. better. How many times do you think you're going to tell your boss that before you fire, bro? <laughs> a year and a half? Just... <laughs> man. Oh, not that's unbelievable. This episode of the Saints Block Party Podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. Wolf, the holidays are coming up, usually a joyous occasion for most. Sometimes that's not the case for everyone. I can speak from personal experience. I lost my mom two years, lost her the day after Thanksgiving. And the holidays can be a triggering experience and something that just gets people down when the holidays come around. Yeah, Adam. You know, there are lots of resources out there for people. Um, one that I know of is BetterHelp.com. They match you with licensed therapists. It's completely, entirely online, convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. From personal experience, therapy can be helpful in so many ways. Finding, having someone to talk to and BetterHelp.com, you can do it all online and be linked to a therapist. Super convenient. This holiday season, Find your bright spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Hudat today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Hudat to get 10% off your first month. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Check engine light on. Take the guesswork out of your check engine light with O'Reilly Veriscan. It's free and provides a report with solutions based on over 650 million vehicle scans verified by ASE certified master technicians. And if you need help, we can recommend a shop for you. Ask for O'Reilly Veriscan today. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. All right, let's 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 continue this list. Um so go, going back to the whole no changes, there there was been numerous times this season where, and I think you said it perfectly. They they could have switched the play calling and and, and offensive coordinator responsibilities to Ronald Curry, and no no one would have known the wiser. They could have announced it. They could nope. have not announced. It. Nope, not, not no changes. And just just out here vibing. When da when da got here, he got rid of Curtis Johnson. He got rid of Dan Roshire. A season later, when uh, the Broncos' job was where Sean Payton went, Zach Streif went there. All three of those coaches are coaches. And I want to be clear how I say this: all three of those coaches are coaches who um, coach with conviction. Which means, if maybe Da did something, said something that maybe they didn't agree with. They would respectfully, and I'm sure it would not be as as good coaches or good people do. They don't do it in front of the team to try to make the coach look bad or or whatever. Maybe off to the sideline, in the office, whatever. Hey, coach, we just want to touch base with you on this, blah blah. No, nah, bro, that's not what the DA want, bro. He won't. He won't. He won't. Yes, man. He won't. Coaches that are going to be able to essentially fall in line, follow his lead. To, to to football hell apparently bro just football purgatory um there was a lot of leadership <clears throat> a lot of accountability with those coaches that da got rid of and, yeah. and we, it, it didn't first it just it we were like why is curtis johnson going? Like, it didn't it didn't it didn't make sense to us initially but then I, man I was it. man was at the senior bowl last year bro walked right him into the senior bowl he scout you know what I'm saying? I will just scout players. Oh, two years ago. And, yeah, yeah, two years. Yeah. That was last January, right? Oh, my, that was uh-uh. last January. Oh, shit, yeah. Fuck, not you're January, right. Yeah, yeah. Not the January just passed, but the one before. Anyway. Yeah, the one before. Yeah, yeah. It was right there. Diego hired the next week. Curtis Johnson gone. A, a gone, dude bro. that Sean Payton made sure to have him on the staff every rip. And, and you know, he went he went away to coach with the Bears for a little while. with two lane, but immediately came back. You don't think this is somebody valuable to have? On your offensive staff, I didn't even say you got to keep him at the same position, Mm-mm. whatever position. You don't think this is someone valuable to keep, you know? I don't know. I don't know, I don't know anything. What do I know? We don't. We don't know shit. Apparently, um, this is a big one from a big one for me, and it just it still irks me. 
just just wasting away Alvin's prom, bro. Just oh. just what? Oh, wa- wasting God. away okay. one of the most special, uniquely talented football players we I have I have seen as long as I've watched football, bro. Like they are no they are no players like AK. None. His playing style, his his aesthetic, his swag. He, it's like that AK with DA at, at the helm. We will not see that version of AK with him at the helm. We won't see ever, it. ever. As a head coach, it should be like a demand. We're getting this many snaps for Alvin Kamara. You know what I'm saying? We're going back and looking at tape from 17, 18, 19, looking at all, all the quality snaps. We are putting him in position to succeed. We're looking at what San Francisco is doing. We're looking at what Miami is doing. We coming up with ways. I'm sitting there as the head coach, even as a defensive guy, sitting in there with Pete Carmichael, Ron Curry. We going over tape. We talking to different coaches. We we doing everything we need to do to get Alvin Kamara and his offense rolling. Like we are exhausting everything. Not bringing in John Gruden <laughs> for a, 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 a just a, a photo shoot. You know what I'm saying? Like we actually getting it done, and it's getting done early. It's getting done in May, June. July, nah, bro, no. Why? Why can? <clears throat> excuse me, Ben Johnson, the Lions, and I know there is a lot. Oh, why the Lions aren't playing uh, Gibbs early? Maybe there's a reason for that. But I all I know is like these last three games, Jamar Gibbs, Jamar Gibbs. It's it's crazy what happens when you get your ball to the play with your, your ball to the playmakers, bro. It's, it's 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 an insane it's an insane concept. Insane. <laughs> and uh, they don't have to look far for evidence because the evidence is on tape. When Alvin Kamara and Taysom Hill have been heavily involved, it's been the best offensive games of their seasons. <laughs> it's, it's right there. It's like we don't have to stretch and lie about it. It's right there in the, in the evidence. That's it's. Uh, it. That that game plan last last week against the Vikings. That, that was bad, sense. dog. It was bro. terrible, bro. It, it it was like they saw what worked against the was it the Bears? Yeah, it was the Bears because we were there. It, it's like they saw what worked against the Bears and they saw what worked against the Colts and was just like, nah, nah, we we do we doing the <laughs> a complete one eighty of that shit. What, uh, bro? <laughs> what? Uh, no offensive coordinator wants to work with Dennis Allen. Again, hmm. no offensive coordinator wants to work with Dennis Allen. I should probably preface it that by saying that's probably just for ninety nine point nine percent of NFL personnel, meaning former NFL head coaches that are offensive head or offensive minded head coaches or former NFL OCs who maybe no longer have a job. What up? Ninety nine percent of those people do not want to work with Dennis Allen. Now, if you went to college ranks and, and pulled a, a young and upcomer who wants yeah, to get their name course. out, is that something that they would probably take? Yes, but are the Saints doing that? Absolutely not. That would require some work, bro. That would require looking, bro. No. So if your talent pool of head coaches is just in it, or if you're just limiting yourself to just the NFL and no offensive coordinator wants to work with you, what the fuck does that say about you? When you have, when you as a team wanted to interview three offensive coordinators this past offseason, three of them, and you couldn't even get an interview, Ryan, an interview, bro. You know that's, you know, when you applying for jobs, bro, and you just, and like you just really need a job, and you, you even you just like, man, they, I just get that interview, bro. I just get that interview. Hey. I'm gonna get my full. You can't even get that. They can't even get the interview, bro, for people who don't got jobs. <laughs> About that. Uh, oh, that's a shoe. We this is this is football hell. Um, not only, to, and this is what makes the whole thing even more compounded. Not only do you not have offensive coordinators that don't that don't want to work with DA, it's compounded by the fact that Pete Carmichael again told the team, "Hey guys." Gave, did y'all guys a solid first the first year DA came here because you couldn't find anyone? I'm out. I'm out. Don't want to be here. I, 
maybe I'll be here. Maybe to make me a little role where I'm on the pay payroll and do sit in the, in the cut. Maybe maybe I'll cut up some film, but I just I don't want to be offensive coordinator. And because no one works to work with DA, bro, they kind of had to like go to Pete and beg him to fucking come back a second year when he did not want to be here a second year. Like how do you, how do you how are you doing that as a quote unquote functional NFL franchise? And I don't Mama see how, I don't see how Loomis and Gail could sit there and be like, "Yeah, we just got to see how the rest of the season goes to make a decision." It's like, no, what? No, you can't. You can't even potentially get the best out of your office of players because no one wants to work with the head coach. Like you are, you are hamstringing yourself just by him being the head coach. <laughs> let me let me turn this AC on and just going so hard at DA getting a little warm in this bitch. Um, oh boy, number seventeen, DC four, Derek Carr, and I'll say this: you and I were fine with going after Derek Carr because Absolutely. we were coming. Coming off of Andy Dalton last season, coming off seeing Trevor Simeon before, we were okay with it. One, completely understood, like, yes, the Saints misscouted, and the, we said this on the podcast, when you have a team, if you have a qu- quarterback thirst, quarterback thirst will make you do some, some insane things, just like a, a man or a, a woman you get that, you get that itch. You just need to get that itch. Like, I just gotta, I just man, gotta, listen. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I just gotta get it. I just gotta get it. Like, you, 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 you do some good. Bro, bro, you do some shit. Good to you. Like, ooh. Bro, you will do some shit where, like, when when <laughs> you come to your sister, like, what the fuck was I? Listen, oh, man. We all been we, there. All, all of us have. Bro, I'm just saying. <laughs> this, but this is what they did with Derek Carr that, that, that made, made shit a little, Make, compounded the situation like it I felt know. like it was like a like a like a sugar daddy situation you're like hey hey, baby mm-hmm. girl like i her you know send me yep. some pictures maybe we could do something we go out on a date and i'll pay this much and then Derek carr's like oh no i'm not gonna do that blah, blah, blah. but you just so oh yeah oh i just need to get it off just need oh you just need to get off oh what about what about 30 million <laughs> exactly Oh, shit, well, and I, I remember, I remember. I don't know if I tweeted about it, but I remember when it happened because they went through the whole, you know, dinner, wearing Derek Carr and everything. It was looking like he was about to sign with the Saints. Then, at the, you know, at that final hour, eleventh hour, the report comes out. He's really interested in the Jets. The Jets. Oh Uh-oh. man, he's those Jets. He's really leaning towards that way. And I'm like, oh, I was thinking, like, don't bite, don't, don't eat the cheese, Saints, don't do it. And they bit. And I, I didn't trip at the time because I like, look, look, right. go get you. You want the guy, go get him. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, a couple of million is going, you know, a couple guaranteed million going to make a difference. We'll give him a guarantee. But a smart, strategic franchise would have definitely, uh, you, you, definitely you come realized their leverage. Yeah, they would have realized, and they would have realized their leverage. The Jets was never going to sign Derek Carr. Never going to sign. Gonna to be fair, that was brill- <clears throat> brilliantly done by Derek Carr's oh. agent. Oh, and man. Mickey Loomis was a fool for falling for it. Also, though, it mu- I, I got to say it. Like you said, the Saints had the Saints that had like a deal on the table that was, I would probably say, Kind of closest to what the Jordan Love extension was that the Packers gave it was a very like incentive, like the mm-hmm. little extension where it's like, we well, are you the guy? We don't know if you're the guy, but if you are the guy, you get paid with all these incentives. That was essentially what was on the table for Derek Carr, it's con- a contract very similar to that. And then maybe if he wasn't the guy, okay, then it's not it's not too difficult to get out of it, and you just got you just be on your way. That Jets report came out, and that very heavy incentive contract turned into something that was very very not a sense of contract which we wouldn't be talking about this if Derek Carr was playing well right wouldn't be an issue we'd be like wouldn't be an issue at all but when you're looking like a top three top five bottom quarterback in the league when when people are talking about should Jameis come in and play 
Oh, bro. I mean, I mean, and Jared and James is making what two million dollars? <laughs> bro, if you, I mean, you could just make an argument. And this, this is going down like sliding, you know, sliding doors. But if you just had slip with Jameson instead, and you save so much money, that money be out of account. Stuck I'm not going Andy there. Dalton, and <laughs> everybody knows me. I am an anti Andy Dalton <laughs> motherfucker because I was it was torture last year for me, bro. But just you with know, the production. And Greg, Greg Rosenthal kept hitting it. I was like, shut up, Greg. You don't know what you're talking about. He kept saying, like, man, and don't, y'all going to get at least the same production, you know what I'm saying, for much less money. I was like, man, whatever, bro. Didn't believe Greg it, bro. Called. Didn't believe it. I didn't believe, didn't I believe, I believe it. it, bro. He was right, dude. <laughs> On the money. I know I know one thing about Andy Dalton. Chris Olave was smiling when Andy Dalton's quarterback in Brooklyn, bro. Smiling. <laughs> Man, was smiling on Sunday, bro. I'm just, I'm just, 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 just saying, bro. Oh, that, this, this is another one on the list. Forgot this one. Even didn't put on this list. How about throwing your, your, your receiver under the fucking bus this season, bro? Oh, don't get me started on that, bro. Don't get me that's, started. That's I think 18, that was 19. it. I think that was it for him. Like as far as like the locker room. Like I'm not saying they, you know, they, you know, they got picket signs ready to walk out of them. But I think internally. Football football players know, bro. They know. It's, and I know they, yep. they all saw that. We saw with Mike having to come out and he literally tweeted. Didn't delete it. He left that tweet up there defending Chris. So you know internally they like, man, fuck that dude. <laughs> they playing. They're going to make their money. They're professionals. They're going to do what they got to do. You know, they're, gonna, they're not going to say nothing crazy to the media. But they know, bro. They know. They know. So we like what eighteen, nineteen? Yes, I a hundred percent know, know that and believe that they do know. I feel like I the, the the crazy thing is Ryan. I feel like I've left like a bunch out. Like oh, that's, yeah. that is the that is the wow thing. Oh, like we not even get into like I didn't put on groupie struggles and they haven't brought in even like a competition to like even give the illusion of like I, potentially here's my thing. Something I'm just keeping track of past two seasons and even uh like triplets talked about it underhill is that their their practices if their training camps have been just really light you know what i'm saying like not really you would think him as a defensive guy you would think he'd be all like brimstone Intense. and fire and intensity and all that but like a like a mike tom like a mike tomlin yeah practice but they, they have not been that yeah, and they have not been there. And you see that. You see that. Like, you see that in the run game. They're the worst mm-hmm. run game in the league. Um, you see that in the physicality in the trenches. Um, like, you have to practice those things. You can't fix a run game in week eight. You know what no. I'm saying? That stuff has to be preached from mini camp on up. And it has to be done through physicality. It's tough. It's hard with the CBA you only have like eight padded practices, a, tra- a training camp. Um, the time is limited and all that stuff. But D's, DA's training camps, he was running those times shorter than what the CBA gives <laughs> al- allows. Like he wasn't even maxing it out. So they've already limited the time, and he's not even maxing that out. And you would think as like a new head coach trying to implement your scheme, your team, your culture, and all that stuff, you want to max it out. People, you know, Andy Reid, uh, with the Chiefs, he maxes his times out. He maxes, like he, you know, players, they might gripe about it or whatever. Tough shit. It's your job. You know what I'm saying? Max the time out to. Do you want to win or not? Get, do you want to win? Exactly. DA, he come with this whole, I guess, I don't know if it's player friendly or whatever. I don't know. And I'm not one of those, like, I'm not that type of guy, like, well, we got to be out there, you know, two a days and all that stuff. But I'm like, if you start seeing the poof in the pudding and your team is starting slow every season where all the things you preach and you want to happen, the pass rush, the trench, the trench play, the tackling and all that stuff, and you're not seeing it on the field, you have to practice that shit. And that's what y'all say all the time. That's what the coaches always say. You got to see it in practice before you see it on the field. And if you're not seeing it in practice, what do you expect? How? Why does it take three weeks into the season to see that Trevor Pennant is not ready to start? You should have saw that shit way in August. You know what I'm saying? And the, crazy, and the crazy thing is, like, I don't think he played that bad after week one, bro. Like, that, that's no, the, neither that's me. The, but, but yes, yeah. to your point, yes. But, 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 but that, that's, but what, that should have been evident. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, if, it, if yes. he was that bad, that should have been evident. 
but they they go easy on the preseason games, which look it's it's a tough thing to manage the whole preseason. You know, with injuries with veterans, da 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 da. I get it, but at some point you got to see it, man. Like as a coach, you got to see what you're trying to put on the field, and I just don't. I feel like they just kind of winging it. I mean, but but. but. I 100% know that they're winging it. And I think a lot of that is it, it it's 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 a top down approach. Like what you yeah. they follow they follow what their leaders and if they I'll I'll go back to it, right? If your leader is is not sure of who to start at quarterback last season and is like getting input like to me, like that's like what the fuck are you even what are you good for honestly like what are you good for you can't you can't even say the defense i mean may, maybe coaching up secondary but but even with that said like marcus may and and honey badger look fucking terrible so like it, it, that only goes so far right so i added these two as as they came to me uh, really quickly uh, remember Rashid Shahid last season, bro? He'd have like a 150 yard play, 60 yard touchdown. We didn't see that man for the rest of the game. Yeah. Uh, AT Perry on the bench this season for Lynn Bodden and, and Keith Kirkwood, Keith Kirkwick, AKA Keith Backwood. For, for what? For what? I got one. Not being able to defend. The, well, I'm not even going to say mobile quarterbacks. Not even be able to defend new generation quarterbacks for the past. What three, four years? Every quarterback I remember in the combine this past uh, draft, every quarterback ran a sub five, five zero in the fourth. That's correct. Cr- every that's quarterback, crazy. where like just a couple of years before, it was only a few that ran sub five four. Not every, all of them, all of them can move. Even that's, a pocket passer can run crazy. pretty well as a, as yeah, a Will quarterback. Le- Will Levis too? God damn, that's wild. Even Will, Le- even Will Levis can move, man. You know, and he was considered a statue, you know, and we can't defend it. This defense cannot defend it. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because of the size, uh, of the size of the defensive ends. I don't know if it's the rush scheme. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But it's been a problem for years. It was a problem of the Sean Payton when he was DC, when uh, a deal was DC. It's, it's a great been a problem as a head coach every single week. Every single so week. So it was. The Jalen Hurts in his second start when when he in Philly, uh, I, I, I swear to God, bro, if, if Tyson Beignet was someone else, the Saints would have lost that, that Bears game, bro. Like, bro they would have lost that Bears. Tyson Absolutely. Beignet unraveled, but everything in the first half that I was seeing, I was like, oh, these niggas about to lose to the Bears. Oh, yeah, we man. about to get this nigga out. Bro, the SBP would have been on the field, right? <laughs> on the field. And look, they, he built the defense to beat the shit out of Tom Brady, which is great. You know what I'm saying? It's great, but these quarterbacks today aren't Tom Brady. You know what I'm saying? They are not going to stay stationary in the pocket. And he has yet to come up with the answer to that as the defensive guru, the defensive head coach of the Saints. And it's like, what what, what are we working with? Like, you should be innovating. And I've seen no innovation from him. Yes, he could coach up a secondary. Yes, he could identify defensive backs. Those are great things. But I have not seen the innovation from him that warrants this kind of, oh, but if we lose DA, our defense, oh, you know, he's God. the best defensive coordinator we've had. Nah, fuck all that, man. Nah. Also, uh, that, that's a great, great <laughs> Like, like, what are, besides that, what, what are you good at? And also, like, are you, is he great at, is he great at identifying? Like he's probably good. He's probably good to great at coaching up secondary players. But I mean, is the identifying more Jeff Ireland than actually DA? Yeah, yeah I don't even like, know. So, we don't even know, right? Um. Oh, I had something and I lost it. Oh, so another thing that people talked about this lo- the last two off seasons with 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 DA is like, oh well, you know, with DA at the helm, you know, like. You know, he he did something that Sean Payton wouldn't wouldn't have done. Like he addressed the offense, he went out and got weapons. Yes, he has. I, I want to give credit for that all around. Is the offense any better 
than Sean Payton's last couple of seasons with the slap, like with a either broken down Drew Brees or the the Trevor Simeon or managed Jameis days. Legit question, bro. It can, is it better? Is it the same? I mean, it's worse, <laughs> which is crazy. Like it makes no sense. So you don't, you don't went out and got weapons. You don't got the weapons. You got your quarterback. You don't got everything you need. And this shit is worse. (laughs) And Sean Payne's out here managing and coaching Russell Wilson to look at least decent. Right. Right. I'm not saying he made, he's brought back Russell Wilson, but he's, he's playing solid football, solid quarterback football. Man. So I I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to happen, but. If the if the Broncos beat the Vikings this upcoming weekend during the Saints bye week, Broncos started zero and three, had a humiliating loss of the seventy offense seventy points, and for them to potentially end up being five and five and have the same record as the Saints right now, with the Saints having I didn't add this one on the list. Saints have the has the easiest record and 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 best injury luck in history this season, and and all they can manage is five. That's the thing. Like, this schedule, bro, like... We kept saying it. Bro, I've never seen a schedule like this. Not only... Think about this, Ryan. Not only was the schedule easy when we saw the schedule, all, they got almost every break imaginable on oh, the bruh. schedule, bro. Justin Jefferson? Wasn't there. Justin you know Fields? <laughs> Josh, Dow- Kirk. Josh Dow was Kirk. there for a week. Kirk. Kirk Cousins, the notorious Saints killer. Beignet gone. <laughs> Beignet. We got Beignet playing. <laughs> Hell. Bitch you. Gardner meant you. They won that game. But you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, it, 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 it was close. It was close for a little bit, bro. Jordan Love. Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield. Not only Baker Mayfield, bro. Baker Mayfield put it on your defense, bro. Put, put it, it on it them. On them. Like, that's the one, when- one of the one game of the seasons where it's like, yeah, we we was gonna lose that game because it's just like <laughs> there's no what if like oh if, we, if Groupie would have made the kick or something like no, no it's not nah, bro no nope. got beat <laughs> just beat. got beat <laughs> decisively even and Mike and Mike Evans went out like early in that game bro it still did not matter didn't matter didn't matter so y'all I, so everyone who in, in, in on airline who's listening to this and we this is I feel like this is an abbreviated list like we could have we could have kept going. There's a lot of heat on, on Dennis Allen, as it fucking should be, as as we rest our case with the evidence. But we're also resting this case for Mickey Loomis, because Mickey Loomis has a chance to rectify this. You, Mi, Mom, Mama Gail, Mama Gail Benson, please, one, please do not refer to me as the help or anything like that. I'm just, I'm a podcast host. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the help. Mickey Loomis, if he cannot get past his his hubris of potentially wanting to win so much with DA so that he does not look like he was wrong, he, him, and, and DA, but more on him, because Mickey has, a, Mickey can make the, Mickey can make the change. That shit falls on him. It takes a bigger person to come out and say, I got it wrong. My bad. Got it wrong. But I am not doubling down in my wrongness that it that's, hurts the team. Oh, that's the worst thing to do. Just to double down on being wrong. So to potentially keep DA beyond the season, go into next season. And you try to do blah, 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 blah. And, and this is all assuming that, like, mo- some of the talent, most of the talent players comes back next season. But if you do, like, some type of, like, little soft reset and players leave, and then and then you're asking DA to win with even less talent? Man, just, just can we just top three top three my team pick right now, bro? <laughs> please, oh. please. <laughs> so, Gail Bitt. Gail Benson, if you want to continue to make money and not lose money, you need to have a conversation with Mickey Loomis. Keep DA out of the fucking conversation and say, 
this needs to be fixed. F I X E D. Fixed. Because if not, some season tickets holders gonna not renew. It's it. I'm just saying, bro. Like I, I don't know what more of a case that we can make. A, an objective, unbiased case. Everything that was on this list are completely fucking factual. This team, everything this season was set to help Dennis Allen succeed. Got all your coaches in the building. Got all the players you wanted in the building. Got you the quarterback. You got the weapons. You got the tight ends. They even list that schedule. Fuck, easy schedule. Injury. You got the the injury luck that the Saints have had that which we've had, had for for five years. You got it all pretty much all in one season. And you you telling me you got a five and five record in in the worst division in football? Rest my case. Rest our case. Rest it, bro. We 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 will we will wait for the verdict. We'll wait for Mom Benson come to the fucking podium like Judge Judy and in little attire and, and make make her ruling, bro. But you know it's funny, bro. Uh, earlier this week, I do the. Bijan was like, man, you guys should do like a positive, just running down the positive, a podcast just running down the positive things from this season. That'd be a nice change up. Shit. Do you know us? <laughs> Must not know us, bro. <laughs> bro, as hard as I went through that for that, say, that March Madness Saints Twitter shit to like make sure that my dog won, bro. We we in this shit, bro. We in the trenches, bro. We in the trenches to get Dennis Allen off the fucking team. Just from the standpoint of like, we just want the team to be fun again. Can there be a direction? Can there be an yes. identity? Can there just be some spice? Can there be a little hope? All off season, everyone was like, Adam, why aren't you on board? Why aren't you on board? I'm like, Dennis Allen is still the head coach, y'all. Like, I don't care about all the other stuff. Right. <laughs> At, it doesn't matter if it's not being if it's not being coached. It doesn't matter. Um, and who there's still time in the season, bro. Like, what, man, it's twenty and forty three, bro. Like, what what more proof do you need? What more proof do you need? What more do you need, man? The whole running the team like a mom and pop sh- pop shop like that that shit. I mean, it's not gonna end, but they gotta have some serious some serious serious fucking discussions Absolutely. about this shit. What, what, going, the, what, what is what is what are y'all tied to so much? I get it. Look, they raised DA from a pup. Been there since 2006 as just a defensive assistant. I remember reading in Sean Payton's book how DA wanted to he was trying to wake, he wanted to go uh either to the Falcons or he wanted to go to Tampa and be with John Gruden. He wanted to go to John Gruden, but he didn't get the call. And you know, Sean Payton was like, Come on over here, buddy. You ain't going nowhere. They raised him from a pup. Went left, went to Denver, D.C., then went to the Raiders, failed, came right on back. You know what I'm saying? So I understand, you know, they do have, like, that personal relationship. But, bro, this this is in the fail. This is business. Coach is business. fired every year, bro. Fired every this year, man. It's time to move on. You've seen it. We've seen the evidence. Adam has laid the evidence out, you know. Call me, call me Casey Novak, bro. Jack McCoy. <laughs> like, Wait. real talk. Oh, th- I, 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 this is real, real cute. Uh, while, as I'm recording, uh, at Blaine Lion Seven on Twitter, Sean Payton never wanted to come back to New Orleans. That's fake news. I, I... hashtag fake news. <laughs> But but I, I, I but I'm I'm wrong on Andrew. Mm. Okay okay um we, we'll we'll see bro we'll see um and I, I'll ask you this for, as we wrap this up this longer podcast what have you um with all the evidence I've laid out obviously a lot of them are personnel ish things the decisions but the blood that Mickey Loomis is on his hands is very it's a it's a lot it's a lot. Should, because we usually, we we typically have a one on one chat, sit Mickey down, have a conversation, have a beignet, have some coffee. But now we're having this conversation with Gail. Everything I laid out that we laid out, 
is that enough for Mickey Loomis to also potentially need to be fired as well? Definitely should be considered. I mean, obviously, I don't see it happening. Um, and I think, I think if he doesn't have the nuts to make the changes, I think she definitely should consider that. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the key. That like it like I feel like Gail needs to go to Mickey and say, "Get this shit right. Get it right." And if part of that's getting right is getting rid of DA. Then that's what getting right is. Get it right. You you cannot tell me with a straight face that Mark Davis could see that Josh McDaniel was not it for his team. He saw it, bro. He saw it. Fires him, is paying him, paying him and John Gruden an exorbitant amount of fucking money for two coaches that do not coach for them anymore. Yeah. You got an interim coach, Antonio Pierce, led him to two wins, and now you get Devontae Adams looking like he, like, at least somewhat happy again, bro. Right. Like, I, I want to see AK smell like that again, bro. I want to oh, see him man. dancing in the locker room, bro. But, oh, they got right. they got DA, bro. So they feel, they, they in shock shake right now, bro. Just... <laughs> Gail Gail has to Gail has to be the one that says this this is not good enough. And if until until Mickey straight to him face, like if you cannot get this right, even if it includes letting go of someone that we we hold in high esteem, that we blah blah. If you can't get this right, then maybe you don't need to be here too. Maybe straight I got maybe I gotta clean all this shit up. Straight start up. over fresh. Real talk. Real talk. What, Will it happen because they're a mom and pop shop? I don't know. But it's it's something that needs, it's a discussion that needs to happen. So anyway, we rested our case for the Saints Block Party Podcast, sponsored by BetterHelp. Um, we shall see and await the verdict. Uh, super long episode. Did not expect to go this long, but good-ass thorough episode. Um, and we'll be back. We'll be back next week. Got the Falcons hate week next week. Upcoming game against Falcons. Um, I would say that this Falcons game next week is the biggest game in Dennis Allen's and Dennis Allen's coaching history. Coach, coach I agree. Career. I agree. Because if that Falcons game is anything remotely close to that Vikings game, and it may be, and if it's with with Desmond Ritter, aka Ritter, who you know what? And Desmond Ritter, you know what he got, bruh? He can move. He's a little mobile, bruh. Yep. Buddy, buddy, buddy. Anyway, thank y'all for everything. For all of y'all who have been down with us, who support us, who, so if you're supporting us just by listening on iTunes, Spotify, anything, YouTube, all that, if you're just, just not even a Patreon, we want to say thank you. If you're a Patreon and you listen to us, and we want to say thank you immensely for all of this people have been in my mentions like oh why are you like you maybe you shouldn't maybe like block so many people because then like maybe those are people that could be supporters later listen if i'm blocking someone that's not anyone that i want support from <laughs> like, I don't, like i don't i don't care like we're not ryan and i aren't like yes we want to have a successful business but like we want this to be with people who are cool fucking people who are dope fucking people who want to just be added to the community that we're building and there are some people quite frankly i don't want them in our fucking community so i don't give two shits it's literally called the saints block party podcast please pick up on the double on the pun please (laughs) please um but those who have been support who are so supportive the the list is exhaustive truly truly thank y'all like y'all are we have no words. We have no words. Y'all are dope. Um, enjoy. Please enjoy this bye week. The best thing ever is the Saints bye week. You get your red zone on. You just, just head back and just, 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 and then and just watch what a functional offense looks like, bro. Just watching red just zone, bro. You're like, oh man, it look, it look easy. It look easy to move the ball in the NFL. <laughs> man, I'm looking forward to it. Um, but. Thank y'all. We'll be back next week previewing, previewing the Falcons game, Falcons hate week. I'm going to let Ryan get some rest because it is almost fucking 1 a.m. his time. We'll be back next week with that. We're out. Peace.
Spring is in the air at Littleton Coin Company, and we want to help you brighten your collection. Visit us at littletoncoin.com all month long to enjoy 15% off your purchase. With a wide selection of coins, paper money, supplies, and more, Littleton Coin Company has something for every collector's taste. Use promo code SPRING at littletoncoin.com for 15% off your purchase all month long. Restrictions apply. Littleton Coin Company. Serving collectors since 1945. Denim is in demand at Plato's Closet in West Ashley and North Charleston. Get cash on the spot for everything denim. Bring in your trendy and classic styles of gently used name brand denim. Get paid for your denim shorts, skirts, jackets, jeans, and more. We're looking for denim that is blue, black, or a bold color. And jeans and styles like mom jeans, boot cut, baggy, flared, and ripped. We want everything denim. Sell your denim for cash at Plato's Closet today. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue.